So as we come to the end of the summer movie season and we've seen two films significantly blow up, Inside Out 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine, both owned by Disney, by the way, we have to start asking ourselves what exactly is the future of movie theaters going to be like? Because there's a lot of people that are under the belief that it's all going to come crashing down in the next couple of years, and they're probably correct to an extent. But what we have to remember is that we as the consumer kind of hold the cards in this particular scenario. And there are ways for us, I think, to put a little bit of pressure on the studios, on the movie theaters, in order to get them to understand that there is a way that everyone can benefit. Right now, the biggest thing facing streamers is the fact that they're all corporate or like telecom company owned. They all have shareholders and that is how they make you know their money. That's how they stay in business. All right, we the consumers are just there to consume, obviously, but we do have a say in all of this. You can vote with your wallet. In fact, many people have voted with their wallets in regards to going to the theaters. Only certain movies are able to get the attention that a lot of movies got way back in the day, right? Going to the theater used to be an appointment type situation, something you did with your friends, your family on the weekends. You'd go on cheap movie Tuesdays. You would go and do all of these, you know, special events, fathom events. One time screenings, you know, very limited events, those kind of stuff. We, we did that all back in the day because we just loved going and seeing movies in the theaters. And that hasn't changed. COVID definitely hurt it, but it didn't take away the desire to sit there in a cool, dark environment and be shown a story on a grand scale, on a big screen with big sound, your popcorn, your drink, your closest friends and family having that experience. The problem, though, is that because these movie companies or these, these theater companies are so desperate, and I mean this, just desperate to stay afloat, that they are looking at more or less leaning into the experience side of it, right? We got deboxed, our seats move, you get blasted in the face with smoke and water and you feel the experience. It's an inner, no, nobody wants that. Like, nobody wants that. The complaints are across the board. Do people like large formats? Yeah. Do people like comfortable seats and good sound? Absolutely. But what they want is they want that for an affordable price. Quentin Tarantino said it best. This is a working man's art form. The fact that we are not as workers, as consumers, as part of the lower and middle class that want entertainment will always justify entertainment. The fact that we're not pushing for that is a big problem. Because we do have access to a lot of the stuff at home, right? The streamers, we can watch Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Disney Plus, you know, Roku, Tubi, Pluto TV, Shudder, Screenbox. You know, I mean, there's a bunch that I'm, I'm obviously missing out on. There's so many options that it becomes this infinite scroll that every single person has experienced while trying to find a movie to watch on Netflix. It's simply just too many options. The theaters used to release one, two movies a week. In the summer of 2008, it was roughly around two to three movies a week, but they were still making money back then. Now everything is, oh, it's in theaters for two days, then it's on streaming. It's like these movie theaters are serving as springboards, as advertisement for trying to get people to go and get the movie on PVOD. And here's the reason why, just so you guys are clear, movie studios will pump out millions of dollars, tens of millions, maybe upwards of a hundred million dollars to market a movie. That is all a tax write-off. They get to write all of that marketing off. So if a movie fails, they get to write off the losses and they get to write off the, uh, the marketing and they get the tax incentives for where they shot the movie. They're not hurting as bad as they want you to believe that they are. So then they go and they put that movie on PVOD where they don't have to have any of the split like they do with movie theaters. So movie theaters get the short end of the stick. This is why movie theaters and movie theater owners really need to, I don't know, stand up for themselves. Stop trying to sell us on these experiences that nobody really wants and bring this cost considerably down. Here's how you do it. If you're not going to go and treat it like what Tarantino said about being a working man's art form, tickets should be five bucks. Fine. Don't do that. Okay. Obviously the economy these days, you know, no, you're not going to find a ticket for five bucks. However, 
we should have tiered pricing. So for the first two weeks, the movie's full price. In the case of Deadpool and Wolverine, it was $19.49 at the theater nearest to me. Other people have told me that they got it for way cheaper elsewhere, which is great. But the top tier pricing should be there for two weeks. Then after that, it drops, let's say, 30% or 50%. And every two weeks after that, or maybe every week after that, it drops to a different price. And it's the same price all day. No matinee screenings, no late night screenings having different prices, same price all day. Here's why this works. Because people will then go, oh, hey, well, you know what? I, I didn't go see Deadpool and Wolverine because of the crowds and the price. But now that it's been out for two weeks, uh, I can go see it for a cheaper price. And they will then go to the theater. They will wait if they want to go and see it. But if they have the FOMO, they'll pay the money to they'll justify paying the money for the FOMO. And they'll go see it. And then they'll tell their friends. Or they might wait to go two weeks later where it's a little bit cheaper, but they're still going back buying concessions using whatever amenities the theaters offer, that kind of thing. By having a tiered pricing system, it allows people the opportunity to still afford to go see movies, but just wait a little bit longer. And that's actually the most economically viable pathway forward. And I say this as a person who spent like 13, 14 years of my life working in movie theaters. I used to manage a drive-in theater down in San Diego. May it rest in peace. The Santee Drive-In. Okay, this is what you will have to do in order to get people to come into the theater to watch your movies and to want to come back. If you go and you pull most people right now, they're going to go say, they'll say, look, I want to go see Deadpool and Wolverine. I've got an emotional connection with that character or those characters, the MCU, so on and so forth. Same thing with Inside Out. It's a big, you know, great Pixar movie dealing with emotional trauma and adolescence and puberty and all of these emotions and things that we all deal with as humans. And the first one is great. So people have emotional connections, but like long legs is doing well because horror fans show up horror and anime are two things that theaters right now should be pumping their cinemas full of like flat out because those two groups will show up. Anime people show up for like the main weekend then they kind of dissipate. Horror, they keep going. If a horror movie's got a good word of mouth, it will make good money. People want to, to do that. I'm just saying you can find ways to, to bring more people into the fold by managing how much it costs to get them in the door. You know what I mean? It's like after the recession back in 2010, I moved to Los Angeles from San Diego. My rent was affordable because... They were desperate to get people to come back and move into these apartments. And it lasted that way for a couple of years until they started jacking the price up to the point of where I couldn't afford to live there anymore. And I couldn't afford to live in that neighborhood anymore. And I really couldn't afford to live in the city anymore. So I moved out. Movie theaters are very similar on that particular front because it becomes so expensive that you start to juggle. Well, if I take my whole family to go see a movie, I'm looking at $100 for a 90 minute experience. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Depends on the movie. It really depends on the movie. This is what theaters need to do. Movie studios need to be shown that this is the way. You can still do streaming, right? And a lot of streaming is going to end up going ad tier anyway. It's going to become cable again. We always wanted a la carte cable systems. We did. Okay. When anyone had a cable TV bundle, they're like, I don't need these 400 other channels. I just want these couple. Well, you can do that with your streamers now. But another problem with that is the fact that even cable prices have gone up. 10 years ago, I was paying $60 a month. Now I'm paying $120 a month for cable internet. That is untenable. Now add up all the streamers, Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, Amazon, you know, these are the ones that we've got. And I don't feel the need to get HBO Max. I don't feel the need to get all the other ones all the time. I can pick and choose. I'll pay a few bucks to watch a movie on, on one streamer for a month. And then I'll, I'll, I'll churn it out and I'll go to the next one. But if you offered me ad supported tiers that were only a couple bucks a month, people will sit through the commercials. That is something that we will all agree to do. We did it for decades. It is not something people are really against. They will complain but they'll do it. And at the end of the day, 
If you want to get that money, that's going to be how you do it ancillarily after it leaves the theater. And also physical media uh, is niche and it's definitely still around. I think a lot of people are getting into it. I find myself buying stuff all the time, you know, because I just like to collect movies. That's a whole other thing. But to get back over to the subject of, of, of saving movie theaters, it has to be tiered pricing. It has to be cheaper. It has to be more accessible. Not even, it has to be just more affordable. And no matter how many times the studios and the movie theater companies complain about, oh, this movie bombed and we lost all this money at the box office and yada, yada, yada. It's like, make your movies more affordable. Maybe more people will go see it. I mean, it's a simple thing. But right now, a lot of these companies are owned by either tech companies, uh, foreign and entities, or, you know, the shareholders, which is the people who control everything and the people who, who they make money for, because the purpose of all business is to basically make money for your shareholders. Uh, they don't care about that because they get their money. And this is going to continuously dwindle and dwindle and dwindle and dwindle. And you know who's going to get the blame? The fans. The fans are going to be the ones who get the blame. The fans are going to be the ones that get treated like crap. The fans are going to be the one that get told you didn't show up. It's your fault when they did not do their due diligence to make it something worth, worth going to see. If I can just wait two weeks and get it on digital and not have to leave the house, that's also uh, an option. It's their fault, not yours, not mine, not ours. It's their fault. And they do need to be reminded of that. And I'm not saying boycott movies. Honestly. I don't even know how to really voice it yet. I'm just saying, like, this is what we need to do. If you have any ideas, I want to hear them. My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.